Howdy out there in CNC machining world and teaching world. Um, this is Ed, the CNC dude here with my Haas shirt. I, got, I was just going through all my shirts and I realized how many Haas shirts I have. And, and uh, I got a, this is my stealth Autodesk cap right here. I bought it at the Autodesk store online. There's not as much stuff on there as I thought. I was looking for a coffee cup. Anyway. I wanted to go over this new course and I was going to break this up into like three short videos on how to best use and best best practices uh, on how to teach this course. Uh, in our school we've been teaching Fusion 360 and now known as Autodesk Fusion uh, since 2018 and we've done all kinds of projects in, uh, from all different kind of people. And then uh, we had to learn, learn like the beginning. And the number one thing would be like, let's see on my list here, get the software, school install versus home install, education ver verification, and teacher verification. So I'm going to cover that right now. This is, I think this screen is out there, but if you do getting started with curriculum, this is really the beginner page I was told right here. And right here it says, number of items, got a welcome video from Mark Terryberry, a little bit about the project. And these are the four courses. And this says related learning. So this is, in the Autodesk system, you'll find some uh, other learning you may want to do. I'm going to come back to this one, Introduction to CAD CAM and Practical CNC. I think this is also a, uh, a must-do project, especially if you're going to go to certification. But it actually covers a lot, a lot more stuff. It's only a 13-hour long course. So, Versus uh, this course, which is, if you look at the time on here, you got 11 plus, I'll round that up to 18. 18 plus 18 is 36, 46, 47, 57, we'll say 60 hours, 60 hours of training. And this is going to, we're going to make complete parts in it. Four components, two pistons and a mirror image of two caliper halves, which are have slightly different, uh, they look almost the same, but they're not. Okay, first things you got to know. Uh, let's go right here. Start with course one. Hit view. I'm going to talk to people like uh, even if your school does not even use Fusion right now. You got an overview of the course. I'm just going to skip that one from now. These are called course downloads or data sets. I'm going to go over that in the second video. And you got course outline getting started. And if you keep on going down here, it says teacher supplements. We also have best practices, teacher guide lectures. This is these downloads are meant for teachers. And down here you have announcements, which are any any updates that have been made, you know, since you last visited. Let's go back up to course downloads. So course downloads are just the the files you'll use with the course. All right, we want to start here, getting started. Module outline. And I believe if you're logged in, it'll keep track of where you're at. So I'm not logged in right now, so. And I don't really have to be. Because we're going to treat this as like I'm a new guy and I don't know anything. Let's do overview, right? Overview. Oh. Sign in and continue learning or no thanks. I'll just do no thanks. All right. And here's another video talking about the course. And if you want to go to the next unit, hit next unit right here. Here it is right here. Get the software. You need to sign up and be an Autodesk user and then get the software. It's kind of like do become a user first and then use the software. We got commercial customers, and you already might be a Autodesk user. 
your student and educators, and are you new to Autodesk? So this will be also uh, if you want to buy Auto, you know, the Fusion. We want to be in the student and educator section right here. Okay, it says offers students, educators, qualifying educational institutions free one-year educational access, which you can extend year to year. Easy access to professional tools, grabs the skills, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Confirm your eligibility access through Autodesk Education Community and need more guidance, get help for students or educators or IT administrators. I'm going to go to educators right now. Educators. All right. Educators Guide to the Education Plan. Confirm your eligibility. So you, as a teacher, you want to get this done first. Get this done first. If you're using your school email, the process will probably be pretty smooth because having a school email is, is pretty much your eligibility. They, they can tell you're not just some random guy. Okay. You will also have access to monitoring and managing your class. And I believe it's 250 people. It says here 125. So obviously a lot of people. And then you got, oh, right here we got students guide. Students guide, I'm going to flip back. So this is uh, the three selections. And the student tool can go through this also. You want probably want to walk them through it to create their account. So I want to create their account. Confirm eligibility. Same thing applies if you have a uh, stu if they're using a school email. You'll probably breeze right through. If you're using like a Gmail account or something, you might have to take an extra step, like uh, scan your ID or something like that. As a teacher, the teacher can also manage some of this stuff. So as far as uh, verifying that they are in the school. So even here it says, confirm your eligibility, create an account. So you can have an account right off the bat without confirming. Eligibility is like just determines like are you a, in a school or you're a paying customer or what, what like that, that's how that works. And then download your software. This would be for your student at home computer, you know, if you want to install it at home. And even right here, it says renewing product access. That's the, like, your year has expired and you, you're, you're back. You're a junior and now you're a senior. You're going to do another year. So just restart your education software. All right, go back to educators. Now, after you've confirmed your, uh, that you're a teacher and you have your teacher account, you'll be giving your account and uh, I actually just, I have used my teacher ID, but in Fusion, I, I named my team, like the school team, because I'm going to have all the students work out of my teacher account so I could uh, keep an eye on them and review this stuff. Admin is, is kind of important because you have to do something called a lab install. It's different than the at-home user, the individual user. A lab install, it says right up here, set up a lab as admin. So a lab install will put it, it uh, doesn't matter who logs into the computer, it'll all be connected, it'll, all, it'll have installs. If you, if you ever try this at home, I tried this on my laptop and I did two installs of the normal one. And the second install didn't recognize it, so I had to reinstall again. A second time, which I realize I, I probably shouldn't have done that, you know. But a lab install doesn't matter, it, but that's kind of like uh, the difference between the two. Fusion will update automatically for the home user. It will not update automatically for the lab user. So just like all software, like if you do SolidWorks or whatever, SolidWorks like changes it up every year. And you can't, like, open up, uh, let's see, new files in an old system, that kind of stuff. Uh, some other cam companies do, like, three times a year. They'll do random updates, and you can decide whether you want to update or not. But at some point, you might get out of whack. So 
if your student user is doing work at home and your lab install is not updated to the latest, you may have a, an issue. Now, not all updates by Fusion are required to keep you in compliance, I say. Like an, a student uh, does his work at home, or I do work on my home computer, and I, I'm on the latest version automatically, and I go to school, and then, then I can't open the file. It doesn't really apply, because if you sign up to have... Uh, be notified of updates, you will get the updates that you should update. So you don't have to get every single update. So that's when you get your IT involved and they'll get they'll get the notice also. There's a procedure so they can kind of automate that or you can just manually update. You know, I used to do it all the time. It's not a big deal. So but our IT department was very good, and we would just see. He just said, just make sure all the computers are turned on at the end of the night, and, and he takes care of all that. All right, let's see. Set up a process current. Yeah, they even talk about it right here. Uh, how often it's updated? Like every it did this estimating every eight weeks. So in access. So you want to get your account as a teacher. And then go through. I what I also did is I made a a a student account with not my name. I use my dog's name, but I have another Gmail account, and that's how I did that. I did that so that I can. I wanted to see how the students saw it, so I made him like a member of my class. So I think that's a good way to do it. So you can. I do that in my. Uh, Google Classroom and stuff like that. I want to see that the students' view of of what it is because they're not going to see it the same as I am. Yeah, so you got what I cover here. Get the software, install the software. School installs a lab install. Home install a, a student can do themselves, or you can do that on your own computer at home. Education verification. Oh, here's another one. You can be... 30, they give you 30 days, so you can actually start teaching right away until they've, you know, maybe they weren't verified right away. And you get 30 days to figure that out, like four weeks. And then it's not really the end of the world after 30 days. If they got, like, you know, messed up a little bit and they need to send go around and see if they have education access. So I'm just going to pull up Fusion right now, and I'll show you what that means. Because uh, you'll see right up at the top it says education or not. So just like all you know, software, we gotta wait. Look, I think they put this little thing in the bottom to give us something to look at. Well, it's it is, even says signing in, connecting to your data, preparing your experience. I wish it had like little end mills running or something. Okay, here we are. Even says right up here, education license. And it says document recovery because I must have done something and bailed out. But it says untitled. Uh, I don't need that. Delete. Click. Delete. Are you sure? Yes. Second chance. All right. I'm going to go over real quick. Management up here is the Autodesk account right here. I'm going to bring it over this side. Come on, Autodesk. So this is my uh, account. So it's uh, now I'm signed in. It says uh, product updates, services. Here's user management by product. And I've handed over the teaching to another teacher. So actually it says right here, legacy seats available, 246 of 251. So these are like other students or uh, people that are still in the system. Like uh, my... Pokey is my my uh, test student. You know, Chris was the teacher that took my place, and Josh home Josh Lucas was on a Project Twenty Twenty Two team. So, so this is like the user manager side as a teacher, and it says right here assign users, and then you can start putting it in there. So you can you can actually do verification this way too. So that's this another way of doing it. Of course, this is your account and your stuff right up in here. So you got home, you got updates, install, updates. Let's look at this, updates. Sometimes I don't look at all this stuff. 
Oh, there they are. Ooh, a lot of stuff in there. Nothing that I want. Okay, I think I was messing around with Inventor. Uh, order history, payment methods, of course, where we don't need to pay. And the other benefit of Fusion is you get all of the upgrades. Or what they call a... Let me go into uh, Manufacturer. What do they call it? I even installed this Camplete. I wanted to see what that did. Uh, machining extensions, I'm sorry. Machi you get all the machining extensions. So you're up here in preferences. And I'll go. I'll just go quickly what preferences you should use. Under general, I use modeling orientation Z up. I think I see CNC guys like to have the Z pointing up. I prefer to use the SolidWorks mouse uh, configuration right here. It'll come as Fusion, so you can try that out. Uh, design, don't need much there. Probably want to make sure you got Capture Design History on. Manufacture. There's some settings in here you can play with, like Show Cycle Time per Operation. I like that one. We're not doing electronics, so we can bail out of that. Don't really need material. Graphics, not a big deal. Network, sometimes in the school I'll get this warning that you're accessing through a server. I'll just have the do not warn. Yeah, I don't need to have that on, on all the time. I got uh, default units, and we're, we're doing everything in inch, so I'm going to make sure everything design and manufactures in inch. Preview features and as any new stuff that's coming up, so you can decide to have it or not. If you get this little blue thing here, that's called a machining extension. So we we get all machining extensions, and every sometimes every thirty days you'll get a notice that it's expiring, and it just automatically renews. So you don't have to worry about that. So multi-axis, any of that extra stuff you get into, it's all in education. You get all of it. And then I'll go over a quickie here. How many? Ooh, I'm 17. I wanted to make this 10 minutes. <laughs> so right here it says Teacher Ed STC Team. And I'm also a member of two other teams. So, But they'll have their own. I call it the team of one. So they'll, they can name it like Pete Chambers Team, whatever their real name is, or they can name it whatever they want. But I make sure they do the schoolwork in my team. So you can make them a member. So in this case, I can go to right here, this little bubble right here. It says open on the web. And I'll get this into a little bit more of this later on. Because this is where I put the assets for the download. So they don't have to go hunting for them all the time. Like this was school Skills USA data we were sharing. So I go back to the home base here. Of course, I have a lot of file folders, so you got all of these here. Student assets right here. So I give everybody access. It says right here, members and permissions. So you can add them to your team. And I had some other stuff like, like this was the course review when I was reviewing this new course in my files here. I have ones on Desktop Mill. I had Skills USA. I got Immerse to Learn projects. I got Sheet Metal that I was playing with last year. So these are all mine. Uh, one's on certifications, but your school, I had like, where's the last class? I think I might have archived. Right here, is it, uh, the year before was this class, and so I had to rename it, so I put it on the bottom. So I got, this was an in-between class, so I got Alex, Brent, Colin, Jacob. So if I wanted to go even back into Real Fusion, I can go down to that. And if I put this on green it'll it'll be right on the top because I got a lot of these folders right there machinist and I will want to look at Brent's projects like we were doing a lot of Titan projects on uh, this one's called a lathe end cap we were doing working on lathe projects a a welded part we needed to wake so I can say like let's see how you're doing on the uh, lathe end cap Okay, sketches. So he didn't get too far. <laughs> That's as far as he got was a sketch. Okay, but then I can just observe what he's got. How far have you got? You haven't made a solid model yet. So anyway, uh, but that's a quickie intro. But one number one is to get your account, teacher account. 
I would experiment with your student account so you can actually see how a student sees it. And then uh, apply to both, get that going, get your lab installs going, and also learn how to do your install for the home one. So if you get you get educated on that, you'll be you can be much more helpful in the classroom to get them going. So, all right, CNC dude Ed signing off, and I'll come up with part two, which will be uh, downloading data sets, how to work with teams. I'll get more in depth on teams using the cloud system, using the, like, where do you want to store the tool library and the post processors and how we ran it in our class. So we ran everything out of the cloud. Nothing was saved on USBs. The only thing we ever saved on USB is the G-code. And now we have a machine with wireless. We're trying to figure out how we can wireless communicate. But in the meantime, the only USBs are G-code only. All right. Thanks, and talk to you later.